Welcome to part two of the SQL tutorial. In this lesson, we will learn how to specify the columns we want from tables using the SELECT clause. Once we have used the FROM clause to specify the tables we want to get data from, we run the SELECT clause to specify the columns we want to get data from. Here is a quick query and a table called EATS. We put the SELECT clause before the FROM clause. First, SQL runs the from clause, designating the eats table as the table we are getting data from. Let's remove the from clause to get some extra space, but remember it still needs to be in the query for the query to work. If we want the column for the ID attribute, then we just place the word ID after the keyword select. Now, we just get the ID column as our result. To get multiple columns from a table, just put the column names in a comma-separated list after the select keyword. With this query, we get the ID column and the calories column. To get all the columns, just put an asterisk after the select clause. This query yields all the columns. Now let's consider the select clause when running a query involving multiple tables. If we run the cross join, we know from the previous lesson that our new table will have both the columns in the first table and then the columns from the second table. You will quickly notice a problem. We have two columns for ID. To differentiate the columns for the two tables, we prefix the column names with their respective table names. We can write eats period ID to get the ID column from the eats table and then person period name to get the name column from the person table. Note that there is only one name column from our tables, so we can just write name in our query without the originating table name. To get all of the columns, we just write an asterisk in the select clause. To get all of the columns originating from the eats table, we just write an asterisk prefixed with the eats table name. The same process works for the person table. Now, we know enough to write complete queries. Here, we are selecting the team ID and the division columns from the teams table. Great, in part three, we will learn how to filter the rows with the where clause.